In this video, I'm going to be showing my complete inbox copy of Karataka for the Commodore 64 computer. And then I'm going to do a complete playthrough from beginning to end of the game using my Ultimate Elite 64. And I'll be showing you uh, that computer in the video as well. Right off the bat, I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Those are the folks that support me on Patreon patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills sit back relax and let's get into the video On the left, we've got Karataka for the Commodore 64. On the right, we've got Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. And why I have the Pac-Man box here, just for a comparison, is I just realized that Broderbund made their boxes the same size as the Atari 2600 boxes, which are the same size as the Atari 7800 boxes, as well as the ColecoVision game boxes. So what's the importance of that? Well, I can use my box protectors that I put on the Atari and ColecoVision games for the Karataka and some of the other Broderbund games that I have. So that's a little interesting thing that uh, Broderbund, at least for a few of their games, made their boxes the same size. So just wanted to point that out real quick. So let's get back into Karataka. Pac-Man, time for you to exit stage right. Here is the front of the Karataka box. Karataka was written by Jordan Mechner. The Commodore 64 port was done by Robert Cook. Let me grab this box here and we'll bring it up close to the camera. Show you there. Got Karataka by Jordan Mechner. Awesome artwork. And down here you can see by Robert Cook, Commodore 64 disc version, joystick or keyboard controlled, arcade action. Side of the box, right here. Looks like it's a decal, but it is not. It is printed on the box. Sometimes they'll put stickers. You know, companies will use the same boxes and then put a decal for, a, you know, Commodore, Atari, you know, whatever it's going to be for. Here is the back of the box. And we'll get you up close to that so you can see that you can tell this box is in really nice condition too it's got a couple of little dings nothing too major and there's the border bone stuff down there and the screenshots from the game pretty cool so now let's uh find out what's in the box Put the gun I down. saw you with the box. What was in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my sin. Oh, uh, what's in the box? Inside the box, we've got the Karataka floppy disk. Bring that up here and show you that. There is the floppy disk. Here is the official Broderbund software disk sleeve. So it's on the back. It's a little crinkly. I need to iron it and get it smoothed out but uh, hey kids here's what a five and a quarter floppy disk looks like it is single-sided and unlike the apple II version that i featured on my channel back in july 2021 there is nothing on the back side there is not an upside down mirrored karateka that was only done on the apple II version also included is a user manual it's like a little cardboard printout here is the front of that and then you open it up and you've got on the left here your keyboard controls and the backstory to the game and then here's the other side and then the back 
warranty information, address, etc. Next up, I'm going to show you my Ultimate Elite 64, which I'll be using for my playthrough of Karateka. Here is my Ultimate Elite 64. This is a legit bread bin case, bread bin keyboard. I have upgraded the badge and the board inside is the Ultimate Elite 64 uh, done by Gideon. It is an FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array board. And I'm gonna be using that to do my playthrough of Karateka. Let me go in a handheld mode here and I'll show you a little more in detail about this Ultimate Elite 64. In handheld mode, I'm gonna do a quick overview of my Ultimate Elite 64. There is the badge that I added to the case. Here is the official bread bin keyboard. Still has the original power LED badge on there. This was a donor case. Uh, the original badge was messed up. Didn't have a board, so I used it for my Ultimate Elite. You can see it still has the Commodore decal there, which should probably be here. I don't know if it's in a weird position. Oh yeah, so let's show you the side. You know, with the Ultimate Elite 64, you still get your controller port 1 and 2, power on and off, and a barrel connector for the power supply. On the back, cartridge port. You can use original cartridges. There is no channel select or RF. You know, these are empty. But here we've got 8-pin video, so you can use an original Commodore monitor, hook up IEC devices, you know, floppy drives, printers, etc. Got the uh, tape port here, so you can hook up a data set. And where the user port would be, we have HDMI, onboard network, and two USB ports, which is really, really cool. I'll put a link in the description to Gideon's website where you can order an Elite 64 board as well as this badge. And now we're going to jump into my gameplay footage. So I want to do a little outro here. Once again, a shout out to my patrons. Thank you for your support. And I'm going to end the video here, but right after this is going to be my gameplay of Karateka, complete with links in the description to the different areas of the game in case you want to learn how to play different sections and win and not get taken out by the bird or by the princess at the end. So again, thank you for watching. Hopefully you like this video and hopefully you enjoy my gameplay of Karateka coming up next.
Thank you for watching my Karataka unboxing and playthrough. As you saw, it took me a little over 20 minutes from beginning to end. And again, down in my description, I've got direct links to the different sections of Karataka so you can uh, improve your Karataka gameplay skills. It is a little tricky, but once you know what to do and how to do it, the game is actually a lot of fun. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video.